Hello and willkommen, welcome to Aiden Eyewitness. We're going to take a look at the area around First Street, bordered on the north by Whitworth Street West, where I am now, on the west by Medlock Street, the A5103, which leads to the airport and the M56, on the east by Cambridge Street, it doesn't lead to Cambridge, and on the south by the Mancunian Way. But we'll start with one of the most famous and well-loved icons of Manchester. I'm standing right in front of it. But it's not there anymore. It was demolished. I took this panorama of the Hacienda exterior on a sunny day in 1998, the year after it closed. I was just passing and was struck how dazzling and attractive the building looked in the bright sunshine. I captured the view in three photographs taken on colour negative film scanned and joined together in Photoshop. It's been used many times. The Hacienda nightclub operated from 1982 to 1997, although it was closed for some of the time. At the peak of its popularity, it was reckoned to be the world's most famous nightclub. I took quite a few shots of the exterior after it closed and assumed it would be there forever. There was talk of converting it into an apartment building, but things didn't turn out quite like that. In later years, some exterior features were added. It continued to be used as offices for factory records. Here's the view under the arch just opposite, and the same view today. Looking the other way, under the arch, we can see the building once known as Grand Island, and on the right, the strange glass office building with its circular towers, dating, I think, from the 1980s. This area used to be Gaythorne Gasworks. Later, it was used as a gas distribution point. After final closure, some parts of the gasworks were put on display under the arches. Here, some more gas equipment, as seen from the next arch along, looking back towards the Hacienda Rotunda. We can see the side of the building is covered in scaffolding. Sadly, preparations were in progress for its demolition. I assumed wrongly that the Rotunda would be preserved, but it wasn't. After the destruction of the original Hacienda building, a new apartment development appeared in its place, also called the Hacienda. The original building was actually quite attractive, and it had an iconic status in the history of Manchester music. The new building recreates the curved facade, but the the brickwork is quite different, it's quite a different colour, and the building is much taller. The new Hacienda was designed by architect Roger Stevenson. It's an attractive modern building, but I wish the original, irreplaceable facade could have been saved, with all the memories it conjures up. This plaque commemorates the band James, but there are many others to remember, as well as co-founder Tony Wilson. There's another James I also knew personally, James Masters. In my 1997 photo taken on film, we're looking south under the viaduct, with the Grand Island building and the strange glass building on the right and what looks like an out-of-season Christmas tree in the foreground. Around this time, the area is just an empty field of grass, but since then, things have changed. The Grand Island building was stripped back to its original concrete frame and then completely rebuilt. It was made higher and given a new exterior and a new design. We'll revisit the reborn building in the present day at the end of this video. Today, from an arch further along, we can see the entrance to the Inside Hotel. Let's move down to Cambridge Street now and another of my film photos from the late 90s taken from the bridge over the River Medlock. Today the view is hidden. We need to move over to the other side of the street. We can see the new building that has appeared on the empty site. It's the Cambridge Street building designed by Hodder Architects. Just at the top of Cambridge Street is the Hotspur Press building and its neighbouring buildings at ground level. In 2024 it's still standing derelict, but I've heard that there are renovation plans involving a tall tower with the facade partially saved. There's the Cambridge Street sign, and another one above it. Boundary of the Township of Manchester, it states. But today, that sign is gone. Where did it go? If you know, get in touch. The south facade overlooks the River Medlock. It's a reminder of how Manchester used to be. I've tried to give it an old film camera look by desaturating the incredibly detailed image I got out of the iPhone, but it's not convincing. I think for the old film camera effect, I need to use my old film camera loaded with black and white film. I'll be back. Keep watching Aiden Eyewitness. Just a stone's throw away, a new futuristic city district is taking shape. We'll see more in a while. This is the eastern entrance to First Street. It's one of the arches under the Manchester South Junction and Altrincham Railway Viaduct, built from 1846 to 1849. Traditionally, railway arches housed industrial units, maybe car repair workshops, but today, as part of the Home Arches project, three arches are being turned into workspaces for young creative talent. My 1997 photo was taken, I think, through the middle arch. That middle arch will be the entrance, leading to the other arches left and right. 
They will be used to help young people develop their creativity and artistic production. Let's move further along Whitworth Street West now, past the Hacienda, and onto this empty site. Recently, the developers announced that construction would soon be starting. But it hasn't started yet. It's called Vision. I don't like that graffiti. I'll crop the image. Luxurious inside, with plenty of facilities. A big building with big ambitions on a small footprint. But when is construction going to start? Now we're looking down towards the new tower that's part of the big new co-living development by Downing. There's the inside hotel. And looking back towards the arch is the railway viaduct and the Axis Tower. That strange glass building, number one City Road, it's just been destroyed to make way for a new office development, also called One City Road. People have called that building a monstrosity. It wasn't a monstrosity. The architects were trying to do something different. It was of its time, but I can find no information about it. Again, a new building with the same name as the old building, so the old one becomes erased from memory, as if it never existed. Edificium non grata but I intend to keep the memory alive. This is Medlock Street, looking back towards the city center. And in this area, we are experiencing remarkable new developments. The signs say, first for space, flexibility, quality. First for work-life balance. First for health, happiness, well-being. First for inspiration, experience, memories. Hmm, nice choice of words for an office lock. But I think we should say, first for impressive new buildings. This is the main tower of Square Garden. It's called Acer Tower. I'm curious to know why it was given this name. Here is a drone view ascending up the side of the tower. It's 139 meters or 456 feet tall. Just across the way, we can see that the old Premier Inn hotel on the corner is under demolition. It was never highly regarded as a piece of architecture and Premier Inn have invested in their other city center hotels. It's set to be replaced by another tall student accommodation tower and next to it, an office building with an artwork nine stories high. Let's have a look at this view of Downing's Square Garden from last year. The Acer Tower is in its early stages. And now, switching to today, the building has topped out and is nearing completion. What was a nondescript concrete framework on the right has emerged as a very distinctive building with a stepped profile. I really like it. It reminds me of classic towers in Lower Manhattan. All these buildings are part of the massive new co-living development by Downing. Though not the tallest, this is going to be one of the most high-profile towers in the city, marking literally the gateway to Manchester, visible as you drive along the main road from the south into the city centre, the A5103 Princess Road. These buildings will house apartments and what are effectively flat shares. The development includes larger individual apartments too. So in the past you may have aspired to living in a semi-detached house on a leafy road in the suburbs, keeping up with the Joneses. Today, many people want to live in the city centre, with no garden, carport or patio, but with a great view over the city. I think I know which one I prefer. There's the 19th century chimney just off Cambridge Street, with a more modern smoke cleaner on the top. The boards proclaim a great call to action. Discover a sustainable place to live, gather, share and experience throughout our gardens and terraces, gym, co-working and meeting spaces. Welcome to co-living, where you're in control. Rent an ensuite room, studio or apartment in a shared three to five bedroom apartment. A new way to rent. Putting down roots, square garden, opening autumn 2024. But is this really a place to put down roots? That's the visualization. But on completion, is it going to live up to expectation? Those are the Unite student buildings from a few years ago, designed by Simpson Hall. And we pan around to today, and we see a much taller and much more imposing set of buildings, also by Simpson Hall. I just can't stop looking up at those buildings, just like I did when I first arrived in New York. Though, of course, the ones in New York are considerably taller. Round on the east side of the construction site, we can see an empty plot. How long will it be before this area starts to sprout cranes and a concrete core starts to arise? All these new structures are being built mostly on empty former industrial sites. Just behind it, there's an early Industrial Revolution building. It's the Macintosh and India Rubber Works, now apartments. I wonder if 200 years ago there was a guy walking around with a sketchbook, peering up and recording all of the exciting new factories and mills that were under construction at that time. Here we can see 19th century industrial revolution meeting 21st century residential revolution. 
That's why the city is so fascinating. Every square meter has got some kind of history to it, some kind of hidden story to tell. Let's take a last look at square gardens and the neighboring office buildings under construction and walk up to the formerly isolated Grand Island building, now renamed as Number One Tony Wilson Place. It is finished up, surrounded by buildings, standing opposite Home Manchester. The art center opened in 2015, both of them overlooking a new square, named after the great man. The statue is of Friedrich Engels, not Tony Wilson, as some visitors think. He would definitely have found that funny. So that's where I'll conclude this video. I think I fancy going inside and enjoying a pint of Manchester Union, definitely recommended. So if you found this video interesting, please like, subscribe and share with others. If you have any opinions to share or some insider information, please post a comment. A major concern of mine is to help to document the past, present and future of the city. So if you can help me out, please consider donating via www.buymeacoffee.com, link below. Vielen Dank fürs Zuschauen und auf Wiedersehen in Manchester.